returning weekends and your free time, one happy customer at a time. That's 588-1588. WIFO 105.5 FM Jessup Big Dog Country Are you thinking of selling your home or business? Hi, I'm Gloria and as a realtor I know that getting rid of the clutter in your home is one of the best ways to help sell your house quickly. At Jessup Premium Storage, our family owned company provides a convenient and secure building for all of your storage needs. We now offer outdoor covered parking for that antique car, boat or RV. Due to our recent expansion, we offer units that range in size from as small as a bedroom closet to as big as a one-car garage. All of our units are inside and climate controlled with 24-hour access and security. Our leases run month to month, so you're not locked into a long-term commitment, giving you the flexibility to move your belongings out the minute you purchase your new home. Stop by today or give us a call, 530-8003. That's 530-8003. Jessup Premium Storage. The cool, clean, and secure. This is Bill Parker with Parker Insurance and Realty, your locally owned and operated independent insurance agency. We specialize in home, auto, commercial, ATV, motorcycle, and boat insurance. Being an independent agency, we have the ability to find you the best price available to suit your insurance need. At Parker Insurance and Realty, we can help you package your insurance or find the specialty insurance required to get you covered. We are your source for any real estate needs, whether buying or selling, we can help you. Give us a call today so we can discuss your insurance or real estate needs. Parker Insurance and Realty, 265 South Macon Street, 427-9345. That's 427-9345. Our open house and ribbon cutting at the all-new Mike Butts Ford and Blackshear was a huge success. If you missed it, don't worry about it. There's still plenty of time to celebrate. We're giving the best deals ever in sales and service now through Saturday. Ask a salesperson how you can save big money with 0% interest for 60 months on select new Fords. Or you can save more than $10,000 on select new 2015 Ford F-150s, America's best-selling pickup for 39 years. Wednesdays in January is ladies' day. Ladies get a free car wash with oil and filter change. If you need new tires, now's the time. Just $5 over cost now through Saturday. Only at the all-new Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. If you're looking for an incredible deal on a new or pre-owned vehicle from the dealer who has always put you first, stop the search. Call the all-new Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. This is Sammy Dixon saying thank you. Thank you very much for your business. Big Dog Country. Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO 105.5 FM in Jessup. One minute after 8 o'clock, one minute after 8 o'clock on this Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning, ninth day of February, and uh, kind of chilly out there this morning, right around 37, 38 degrees, looking for a high today of around 49 degrees with partly sunny skies. Tonight, clear and breezy, so it's going to feel real cold tonight. Low tonight, 27, but breezy. High tomorrow, 48. Low tomorrow night of 26. And then on Thursday, high of 57. The Audubon Harbor levels at 12.5 feet. And pretty much steady in that area. Once again, 37 degrees, 38 right in that area here in southeast Georgia. It is now time for the world famous Butch and Bob Show. Brought to you by Parker Insurance and Realty on Macon Street in downtown Jessup. Also brought to you by uh, Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear and Jessup Premium Storage out here on the Waycross Highway. Good morning, Bob. Good morning. Well, we got Senator Isis coming on in just a couple of moments here, and uh, we'll have him on the air. And then um, we've got some guests also in the, in the green room this morning, and we'll have them on after that. But we're waiting for uh, Senator Isis to come on in just a few moments here on Big Dog Country Radio. And uh, you said tomorrow you're going to have the interview with um, Grayson Lambert on, right on sports? Right on sports, yeah. Okay. I had a chance to talk to Grayson a little bit there at the uh, at the Fairhaven fundraiser on Friday night. You, just, you don't really realize how tall he is until you're standing next to him, you know? He's tall, that's for sure. Is he 6'5"? I mean, he's up there. He's up there. <laughs> he's up there. But um, I know that he's... Um, uh, excited about the uh, the new uh, coach and the opportunities he has there uh, for next year. So it's going to be interesting to see um, uh, how Grayson does this coming year. With um, are there any new quarterbacks coming in for Georgia that's going to uh, compete? Yeah, they got the number one quarterback in the country. They did get him right. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure. Sometimes you never know when those things may fall apart, but they come through. Matter of fact, speaking of the. Uh, of uh, the uh, recruiting for Georgia, well, they ended up like somewhere around 10th, 12th, somewhere in that area. And they finished ninth. Ninth. Finished in the top 10. But, you know, those polls mean absolutely nothing. 
absolutely nothing. Those four stars mean absolutely nothing. Five stars mean absolutely nothing. Go ask absolutely Alvin. nothing. Go ask Alvin how their five-star quarterback did last year. He threw three eleven interceptions. First three games hasn't seen the field since. So. Hadn't seen the field since. Huh? No difference between high school and college. Huh? You just don't know what they're going to. You don't know if they're going to pan out or not. You just have to hope and pray that it pans out. You know? Okay. Well, we didn't get a chance to yesterday talk about the Super Bowl. Um, we're just excited as I don't know what is uh, for Peyton Manning uh, winning, right? I'm glad he won. Yeah, me too. I mean, he played awful, but he but he won. Yes, but yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a very boring offensive game. It was a defensive ball game, but you know, Denver second half just basically tried not to lose the game. There were right. three plays, punt, three plays, punt, three plays, punt. But their defense was so good, you know, yeah, they good. played awful. So just glad to see Peyton get the win. I wish he would have just went ahead and said he's done, you know. Yeah, you know, I think you got bad advice. That's when you do it. You know, when, you have, when you're holding the trophy, you say, it's been a great ride. Thank you very much. Well, I think what his thing was, he didn't want to make it about him. him. Well, it's about him. <laughs> it's about him for two weeks. Yeah. And uh, this is everybody wanting to go out with the white horse and the trophy and everything else. And then he let everybody down by saying, well, I'm going to think about it. Well, what's there to think about? You know, you can't throw the ball 10 yards. It was awful. <laughs> the worst performance in the history of the world. You know, stand up there with the trophy and tell everybody, thank you very much. It's my last rodeo. Yeah, well, his former coach, Tony Dungy, called him up and said, why don't you just wait a little bit and don't make it in the motion of the moment? Bad advice. I don't know. Tony Dungy's pretty good about giving advice. That's bad advice. Um, you, not, you, pay, you put the focus on the team instead of on you. you know, but the bottom line, for years, you get to see that John Elway holding the trophy saying, this oh, is my yeah. last draw. Jerome uh, Bettis, the, the bus stops in Detroit. It. That's what we wanted. We wanted Peyton Manning to hold the trophy and say, it's over with. Thank you very much. That's it. But now we you see, it. there he could actually get on the white horse and run off the field because they have a white horse as the mascot there at Denver. He got bad advice. Okay. I wasn't. I mean, please tell me he's not even going to try to come back and play. Anymore. I hope not. I really hope not. And what about the expression on Eli Manning's face? The entire, you know, they go and get that uh, touchdown there toward the end of the game, and everybody in the Eli uh, booth there is jumping up. And, oh, there's our call from uh, Senator Drakson. All right, hold on. We'll be here with Senator Drakson in a moment.
the consensus the United States is supposed to be the leading nation and we're supposed to be above that. But Trump says he'll bring all that back if elected. You think this helps him or hurts him with the party and more importantly, the American people? You know, really, I don't think you can tough, talk too tough when you're talking about uh, terrorists and terrorism and what you what they would do to us, and they will do anything to you. You've got to, if you're not going to have a, something they fear, then you're not going to get the information they need. But we are a nation that decided a few years ago, in fact, I was part of the decision that the Army Field Manual would be the guide in terms of interrogation. It did not allow waterboarding, and I think when when Trump made the statement that he made, I think he was talking about getting tough, but he didn't, he wasn't specific, so I'd have to wait and hear what he got to say specifically before I go forward. When I watch these debates, one thing that all the Republican candidates say is that the military has really been depleted with uh, President Obama. Is that how you see it? Are we as bad as a lot of people make you think we're out to be? Well, let me give you two numbers. Uh, five years ago, we were at 560,000. We're now going down to 450,000. That's a reduction of almost 20% in our army alone. Okay. And one other thing with the, the election for the president, President Obama said on more than one occasion he wants to close Guantanamo, Cuba, and release all those prisoners that have been captured and released as terrorists by the government. Is he going to be able to do that, or will there be a fight about that in Washington? There has been a fight, and so far we've been able to keep Guantanamo open. The president has taken out of his appropriation bill and his budgets, but we put the money back in to keep it open. Let me tell you, going back to your question about what Trump said about interrogation, the best place in the world to interrogate people is at Guantanamo Bay because we have professionals there. That's where we, they've derived that information. Putting them in prisons in the United States of America or releasing them to the Middle East is not in the best interest of the American people. So I am adamantly in support of keeping Guantanamo open and keeping our interrogation program going there as long as we can. And if you're just tuning in uh, with us, this is U.S. Senator Johnny Isaacson from Washington, D.C. Uh, here locally, I hear that a lot of government officials have reached out to you in your office asking for help on this a public meeting with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and, uh, and possibly bringing a lot of coalition to Wayne County. So I'm sure you're familiar with that. Uh, just want to get your thoughts on that and how you were able to help us with that public meeting. Well, I sent a letter to the Corps of Engineers on February the 1st and followed that up with a call three days later that was about the Port of Savannah, but I also included the, the uh, coalition situation in Wayne County. And they have already sent some dates to the county commission. The county commission has not decided on what date that hearing will be yet, but that's in the process of taking place. I will have staff and representatives there myself at the hearing to make sure that we get a good report back. Given what happened in Flint, Michigan, you've got to be sure that when you have any municipal failure of a system, whether it's a leachate from a, from a waste disposal center or whether it's lead pipe, that you've got to address it and address it quickly. And I was happy to write the letter on behalf of the people of Wayne County and we'll be happy to be represented at the hearing when it takes place. I'm sure the officials here want to thank you for your help again. Uh, that's the great thing about having people that you know in places like Washington, D.C. to get things done. And like I said, they said they reached out to you and to our congressman. And fortunately, we're going to be able to get that public hearing here in Wayne County. So I know they want to thank you for that. Happy to do it anytime. What are some of the things that are taking place in Washington are affecting here, us here in Georgia? What are some of the things that people need to know about that may not hear about? Well, you know, it's going to be, that's a good question because this is going to be a very interesting year given the intensity of the presidential race and the fact that you have a non-incumbent race where the whoever's elected will be either from the Democratic group of nominees or ours, but not an incumbent like Obama. You're going to have a lot of competition for that. You have your primaries have been moved, I mean, your conventions have been moved up to the last two weeks of July. Congress will probably be in session until about the middle of July and then break for the conventions and then break for August and probably break until October 1st, the end of the fiscal year, to come in and do something on appropriations and then go back for the last month of the campaign. So if it doesn't get done in the first six months of this year, it's probably not going to get done. And Mitch McConnell is doing a good job on the agenda in the Senate to get all the appropriation bills up, try and get them out of the Senate by the 1st of June so the House will have time to respond and we can hopefully have an appropriations bill before we leave in July because if we don't, be another year of continued resolutions, and that's not good for the country. You know, on the Democratic side of the presidential race, um, Ms. Clinton seems to think that the email scandal is not going to be a problem, but you hear all these other pundits say that it, it possibly could be a problem for her. What's the word in Washington? Any possibility of her being indicted on those at all, or any repercussions for all that security leak? I hear lots of rumors. I don't hear many facts because the FBI is a great agency and they don't talk about any investigation. I have heard that there is a grand jury that's, that the FBI is presenting evidence to. I don't know that that's true, but that's what the, one of the rumors that's going around. Just to give you a good comparison, Bush, David Petraeus was found guilty of a lot less than Hillary Clinton has been accused of doing. They're now telling us that 22 of the emails that were found on her personal server were emails that are so high sensitive I couldn't even read them as a member of the United States Senate. If that's the case, I can't.
can't help but think the FBI will continue the investigation. They'll make a recommendation to the Justice Department, and ultimately the president will decide whether or not they move forward with an indictment or a further investigation, or whether they end the investigation as it is now. Okay, so, friends of Washington, like he's keep hearing these rumors that Joe Biden's getting prepared to possibly jump in if she has to drop out. Are you hearing any of that? That that not only is conventional wisdom, but if you back away and look at it from ten thousand feet, that's the only thing that could happen. I mean, Joe is a very competent individual. He's been in the United States Senate. He's been a leader of the country. He's been vice president. He's very articulate. Uh, if if she goes, and if Bernie Sanders is not nominated by the convention, I mean, it's I don't see anybody else uh, other than uh, Joe Biden or possibly John Kerry seeking that nomination. If John Kerry saw it, I don't think he would get it because of the Iranian nuclear deal. I think it'd be Joe Biden. You know, as I mentioned, Georgia's good at polls March 1st. Uh, what's your plans between now and then? Will you be in Georgia a lot with the uh, possible Candace campaign in there? You know, you're still just sitting back and watching the process, or how does that work? I'm not going to be sitting back, I can guarantee you that. I've got my own race this November, and so I'm going to be traveling. All next week is the President's Day break, so I'll be all over the state. We start out in Monday in Bainbridge and go from there to Tifton and go through Adel and Lenox, Georgia, and Cook County and a good part of South Georgia in that area. Come back to the Atlanta area for a couple of days. We'll be in Jessup in late March or early April, and we'll be covering the state. Last week we were in Savannah and Sea Island and did an event down in Jacksonville, which is kind of the capital of South Georgia, so we have a few people that go and went down there. We're trying to, trying to cover the state and make sure we get out in touch with all the people in our state that we represent. Tell them we want to do it for six more years. We want to appreciate their vote. Look forward to seeing you. One final question. You know, we always get an update on the deepening of the port in Savannah. Uh, you said you were in Savannah. Where do we stand on that? Is it still moving forward? Well, the president's budget is going to be released. It was going to be released at 8 a.m. this morning, but they put it off till 1245 today. We'll know at 1245 how much the president is including in the budget for the port of Savannah. It's, it's essential that we get enough money to complete the port in a four-year process, somewhere between 80 and $100 million is the magic number for this year and the same amount for the next three years to get it finished. Uh, Sean Donovan, the head of OMB, is the guy I've been working with. He's top of the line awareness of the port. We, we, we Times are tight, but we can't fail to get the money necessary to continue Savannah, and I do think that will happen. I know you're a big sports fan. Did you like the Super Bowl to go your way? I like the Super Bowl, but I know you're a big Bulldog fan. I sure did like signing day. We came out pretty good given the change of coaches and everything we've been through. I was in Athens for the game with Auburn Saturday night in basketball, and everybody was buzzing about Jacob Eason and the number of recruits we got for next season. I'm excited. Everybody's excited. But Senator, always a pleasure. Again, we appreciate you being on the show. Again, as I told them on the local news, it's always very informative, very insightful when we appreciate you taking time to be here on the world famous Switch and bob show we look forward to seeing you when you get here to wayne county that's my best wishes everybody and jessup take care okay thank you very much again those comments of your senator johnny Atkinson. again a special guest here on the world famous Switch and bob show always a pleasure to have him and again we've got more guests i believe out there in the green room so we'll be back with more right after these commercial messages did you know it's possible to update your kitchen in only one day Yes, only one day. Kitchen Tune-Up, located inside your Sears hometown store in Jessup, offers a one-day wood reconditioning tune-up. If normal wear and tear is caught up with your cabinets and the drawers look worn and the wood seems greasy or grimy, then call Kitchen Tune-Up today and get a free estimate on how you can get your kitchen looking like new again at a very affordable price. For more information, visit kitchentuneup.com or call for your free estimate at 427-2435. That's 427-2435. Are you wanting that one-of-a-kind something? Come visit Victoria's. Victoria's has repurposed and refinished furniture, home decor, rugs, and art. Victoria's also has two new jewelry lines, Craven and MX Jewelry. Also book your private paint party. Paint parties are taught by Amy from Artisan's Oasis. Victoria's also has 10 by 10 booth rentals with no percentage. Visit Victoria's next to Angel's Downtown Jessup. 105.5 FM and Jess at Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO, 18 minutes after 8 o'clock. World famous Butch and Bob show for this Tuesday morning, the ninth day of um, February. And a uh, good interview that uh, Bob had there with uh, Senator Johnny Askson. And we do appreciate the Senator herself in our cold ash situation and the depot situation or, or rail yard maybe coming to um, Jessup out there at Broadhurst Environmental. But we move on uh, here with the world famous Butch and Bob show. We have a guest in here with us from Coastal Pines Technical College, Larry Goodman. Good morning, Larry. Good morning, everyone. How are you? 
I'm doing good. You're doing good. Now, what uh, department are you with there? Um, and what do you teach there at Coastal Pines? I'm with the welding department. Yeah, we've had you on before, right? That's correct. Okay, we've had you on before. Talk about the welding and the and a career that a person can uh, get in welding to earn a, a good income. Or if they just want to pick up a few skills to help what they're doing right now, they can go out there and take classes at Coastal Pines. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, you've got all kinds of information there in front of you, Larry. I know that you've got some things to talk about this morning from Coastal Pines about the welding classes you uh, folks can take there at Coastal Pines. Go ahead and talk about it. Um, about the registration, we have an early new student registration begins on March 14th. Returning student registration is the week of March 7th. Late registration starts May 9th and possibly ends May 17th or May 18th. Okay. We have uh, the summer semester starts actually May 16th and financial aid. The deadline is April 1st to get all your information and all your paperwork done on the financial aid. Okay. Our orientation for Jessup for the summer semester is May 9th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. On which date again? May 9th. May 9th, okay. And when do the classes begin uh, for the next, um, do y'all call it semester there or quarter? Semester, semester. summer semester. Summer semester starts when? Summer semester is going to start May 16th. May 16th, summer semester starts at Coastal Pines, but you can go ahead and start doing your registration in March, correct? That's correct. And we have locations in Jessup, Baxley, Golden Isles, Waycross, Alma, Hazelhurst and Camden. Okay. And where's the uh, the welding taught? I know it's taught here in Jessup, right? That's correct. In any place else? Yes, it's uh, Jessup, Baxley, uh, Waycross, Alma, Hazelhurst, and Camden. Okay. And uh, what kind of courses in welding can they take at uh, Coastal Pines? We offer a uh, MIG, the GMAW, the TIG, the GTAW, and the STIG, the small. Whatever um, you say. <laughs> Pretty much, pretty if you're much, in welding, you know what you're talking about. Huh? All, all, yeah, all three. Uh, the MIG, which is the wire gun. It, it's got a gun with a uh, wire spool. Okay. The TIG, which is a tungsten, and you feed it with a fill, with another filler rod. And stick welding is uh, most popular. But everybody's got the, the old stick welders that you put a rod in. Mm -hmm. And we have um, on the stick MIG and TIG, we offer flat, horizontal, vertical, and overhead. And at the end of each course, we do a bend test, which would be a three-eighths bend test or a one-inch bend test. The TIG, we do aluminum. We get into aluminum and stainless steel. Uh, we offer oxyfuel welding, brazing, and cutting. Uh, you'll learn how to cut with a plasma cutter, a track torch, rotary torch. And we offer pipe. We offer a little bit of pipe welding. Okay. Uh, to, to learn how to get into the pipe welding with the TIG, MIG, and stick. You know, you, you, everything that you read here in America that we're short on skilled labor. And of course, I, you know, welding to me, of course, is skilled labor. It's, it's where you learn a particular trade, you're good at it, and you can go out there and get uh, pretty good jobs, can't you? That's correct. Uh, I think you'll have close to near 100% placement there at Coastal Fines uh, for many of your departments there, right? That is correct. Uh, a lot of a lot of the, the welding jobs are uh, traveling jobs because uh, after a while everything's welded up here uh -huh. and uh, there's a lot of money to be made out there. Okay, so uh, a lot of folks who are welders basically go to shutdowns, uh, they go to repair work at different uh, places and things of this sort and uh, earn a good income welding. Yeah, a lot of them go to uh, pipe welding, uh, like you said, shutdowns, uh, power, uh, nuclear power plants. A lot of shipyards, different places, um, uh, railroad. Okay. And if a person is interested in learning about the um, the career of being a welder, how do they go about learning about it before they actually commit to the classes? Uh, online, uh, YouTube. Uh, um, there's a lot of information on YouTube. Look, YouTube? Okay. Yes. Uh, if you, if you want to learn out and, and see if that's for you, you can look up YouTube. And you can look up all different kinds of uh, uh, videos, instructional videos, and it pretty much shows you what you'd be getting into. Okay. Um, and then locally, if they want to uh, learn about the classes involved here, they just contact uh, you, Larry Goodman, there at uh, Coastal Ponds. Is that correct? 
That's correct. Okay. And anything else that you want to talk about the uh, the college or the welding department there at Coastal Pines? Um, I just want to go back over the um, early new student registration okay. is on March 14th. The returning student registration is the week of March 7th. Late registration is May 9th, starts May 9th, and that's for the summer semesters. And the summer summer semester starts May 16th. Now, a lot of people have to, they, they can go down and apply for financial aid and get all kinds of uh, grants, of the HOPE grant, the Pell grant, and uh, all that needs to be done and paperwork needs to be turned in by April 1st. Okay. And Sounds the, good. And the locations are uh, as follows, Jessup, Baxley, Gold Niles, Waycross, Alma, Hazelhurst, and Camden. All right. Bob, any questions uh, for Larry this morning? I don't know nothing about welding. You know nothing about welding. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know what to ask him. So. <laughs> yeah, and neither do I, but I figured that he'd come over here and he could talk about it. We've had Larry on before. Uh, the welding uh, the department there at uh, the classes there can train folks to to get a great job in welding, just like, you know, they can become an electrician or a nurse or all kinds of stuff out there at Coastal Pines. And they have such a great uh placement department there and helping folks find jobs you'll have this contacts with all the businesses out there that have the particular need of what y'all are teaching and that to me that is uh, just a great asset for folks who to go to coastal pines can go here locally get a skill get one there get a job and a good career to be able to support themselves and their families all right anything else larry anything else you want to talk about this morning that about wraps it up that about wraps it up i'm glad that you were able to come back on here and talk, uh, talk about coastal pines technical college and the welding department there and the upcoming uh, registration dates and when the summer semester begins thanks sir okay we'll be back before the world famous butch and bob show in a moment take your special loved one to captain joe's this sunday and enjoy a candlelight dinner for two you and your valentine can dine on a delicious seafood platter for two or a ribeye steak dinner for two for just 39.95 your dinners come complete with captain joe's famous all you can eat soup salad and dessert bar you can also order your favorite dinner from captain joe's regular menu Special candlelight dinners for two will be served this Sunday, Valentine's Day, from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Captain Joe's on the Savannah Highway in Jessup. 105.5 FM in Jessup. Okay, Bob, good interview there with uh, Senator uh, Johnny Isaacson. Just great for him. His office calls up, and he likes to get on, uh, you know, three or four times a year. Yeah, always good to hear from him. I said, I said just very informative. I wonder if he's got any over. I hadn't heard any in the opposition. It sounds like it's going to hit the campaign trail by it. Well, you, you always got to be proactive, you know. Oh, yes, I yeah. hadn't heard anybody running against it or something. I guess. I hadn't heard anything. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You're listening for Big Dog, WIFL 105.5 FM. And just go back to the Super Bowl there. You know, they go off and they score that touchdown Denver does toward the end of the game. And um, the entire Manning family's jumping up and down and hollering and screaming and yelling and laughing. And Eli Manning's just sitting there with a stone wall face. What is it with, with Peyton's brother? I'm telling you, Peyton says they don't have that conversation, but everybody that you talk to in the media says that that was the one thing Eli held over Peyton's head. As many records Peyton has, when they get with family functions on Thanksgiving and Christmas, Eli would rub it in and says, well, I got two rings, we got one. You know, you know, brothers are. You mean to tell me his brother came there to watch the game, to watch his brother lose? I'm just telling you, he didn't look happy that he was getting that second ring. He didn't, did he? I mean, I don't know what's going on. I can't wait. I haven't heard Eli's response. Everybody else in the box was jumping up and down. I know. He's just sitting there stonewall face, you know. His his expression was like, ah, wait, I can't hold that over his head anymore. (laughs) 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 I don't know what is really. You want your brother to do good. I haven't heard what is he now. Other people said allegedly he had money on Carolina, so I don't know if that's true. <laughs> Where are that? Two hundred grand. I don't. I don't, I don't, think, uh, I don't know. It was just interesting. You know, he didn't look real happy. He know. didn't, did he? He uh, was making a big issue. I'm sure he's going to have to trust it eventually. But yeah. I said Peyton played down play, so I'm just telling other people who talk to Eli and you know just hearing these other like Patrick and mm-hmm. Rome and all that. They talk about how that was the one thing Eli you know, doesn't have all the records, doesn't have all the accolades that Peyton has. But he had two Super Bowl rings to Peyton's one, so he mm-hmm. kind of just you know that was his little thing that he held. He had something over his older brother. Yeah, but now he doesn't. So. I don't know if that's true or not. That's just. Uh, that's just you always you say it's always about the money, honey. So you probably lost money on the bet. 
That's what you hear. <laughs> it probably came down to the money. That's probably what it is. So you said he paid against his brother. He probably did, and that's what he probably lost to that. So there's that two, three hundred grand down the. <laughs> that's probably what it was. Yeah. Oh well. Oh well. Don't bet against family. <laughs> but you know, everybody's talking about how the commercials were the biggest dud of the Super Bowl. Yeah, I heard about the yeah. Super Bowl. You'd have some memorable real commercials, but it just nothing really. Well, I out. think the people today are so scared they're going to offend anybody in the top away that everybody has to, to, you know, put a, a vanilla coating on everything. So I don't know if that's it or not. But um, you know, you, did, you didn't get the heartfelt ones like you used to. You know, the last few years with Budweiser, uh, with the Clydells and the, and the, um, the dog. Uh, the puppy, and then of course the former uh, trainer of the uh, of the um, of the Clydesdale, Clydesdale. So I don't know. I don't know. The hot dogs running through the field towards the ketchup and mustard is pretty cute. I thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing really stood out as far as commercials. So. Uh, oh, anything in your mind this morning before we head out of the world famous Butch and Bob show? No, really. Like I said, I'm just glad Peyton did win. I'm just disappointed he just didn't hold the trip. Say it's the last hurrah. So we'll see if Alvon takes him to. I hope they're not thinking about, you know, there's this. And you know, they saying yesterday that, you know, it, Archie said he's done in Denver. Like they're still mad that he got benched in Denver. So they said he possibly could get to Los Angeles. But watching him play in that game, he just needs to head off. He needs to wrap it up. He's got game. enough money. He needs to wrap it up. Just, Hoping he himself hurt. I'm hoping that was his last game. You know, it's like a lot of folks said. You see, you saw all those other MVPs, uh, Super Bowl MVPs, come walking out of the tunnel there, and most of them were walking with a limp. And you yeah. could tell that they they're they're not in real good physical condition. That you could tell the years of playing football took a toll on their bodies. And they played 50 Super Bowls since the first Super Bowl winning team that had less than 200 yards offense. Amazing. It just wasn't a good day offensively. <laughs> the defense definitely won the Super Big D won it. All right, Bob. Have a good day. All right, the world-famous Butch and Bob show brought to you 